Hi everybody! I received a comment on one of my previous videos suggesting that you guys might like to see a rundown of my top 10 favourite colouring book artists. So I've been thinking about that and trying to figure out a way to get this video done and the tiny little problem that I ran into was that maybe my top 3 colouring book artists I have coloured loads of pictures by them and the rest I've hardly coloured any at all. Maybe I've only just discovered that artist so haven't actually got a lot of their image to be colouring in or their images are quite hard to get hold of, either the books being hard to get or only selling on Etsy. Or I'm a little bit intimidated so I'm a bit too scared to be messing the pictures up which is why I haven't coloured any by those artists. Um, so I thought as my top three maybe have quite a lot of pictures each and if I put all those together into one video it would be running into the hours long. I thought my top three artists I would give their own video each showing the books I have by them and the pictures I've coloured by them and then after that I'll play it by ear and see how many artists I can put together into one video maybe two, three, four, however many pictures I've coloured by them but just to showcase the top ten of my artists that's the format I've uh, gone with so I will actually be starting from one, which is Jasmine Becky Griffith, my favourite colouring book artist, but not the artist that I've coloured the most pictures by, surprisingly, which I didn't realise until I actually started preparing to make these videos. Um, but yeah, she is my favourite colouring book artist, so I will be starting from number one and working my way down, or, or up, however you see it, from one to ten. So today I'll be showing you all the pictures I've coloured by Jasmine Becky Griffith and I'll be starting with the Colouring Heavens that Jasmine did. She did do a couple where she was the featured artist and I have one where she's done a few. So I'll show you those and then move on to the colouring books and uh, hopefully we won't run too long. And here's the first one, Colouring Heaven Strangeling Special. This was actually the first Colouring Heaven that I did ever buy when I first got into colouring back in maybe 2017, round about then. And the first picture I did colour back then, back in 2017, or thereabouts, I can't exactly remember because I wasn't dating my pictures. Um, I'll pop a picture of it up here because recently I did go back into this picture and rework it in a video on my channel. And I think I improved it quite a bit. I'm a lot happier with it now, to be honest. So this is how it looked like when I first coloured it, just coloured with super tips I think and Faber-Castell fibre tip pens. There's some gel pen in there. And maybe a little bit of white gel pen, I think there's on there. <laughs> Even back then, I was with the white gel pen highlights. But yeah, that's how it looked when I first coloured it in. Now I have reworked it. And here we go. This is uh, my first picture that I ever coloured by Jasmine. Reworked back at the beginning of the month. I went back into it and added a little bit of water to this pen in the background to give that more of a kind of watercolory sort of effect. It didn't work exactly how I intended it to, but I do like how it's how it's given this kind of bubbly, watery effect in the background. And I think she is supposed to be a mermaid. I think this one is from the Mermaids book, so that is kind of fitting. And the rest I went back in with various pencils, um, Castle Arts and Arteza mainly, I think. I tried to keep the little dots I had going on in her hair because I was really quite proud of them at the time. Those are with um, blue glitter gel pen, I think. A lot of the fish and the butterflies, they were glitter gel pens, so I just kind of shaded those a little bit with the pencils just to bring out the colour a little bit more. Tried to smooth out her skin as best as I could. I'm not 100% happy with how this cheek kind of worked out here. Well, I did the best I could and I'm really quite happy with how that's improved, I think. Yeah. Um, I, re I remember being really disappointed with the background when I first coloured that and thinking, oh, I wish I could do... A, more, a better, more kind of watery looking background, but yeah, now I actually have, so I am quite happy. But enough on that one. And back in the day, back when I first started colouring, I did think, like a lot of people, that you had to start at the beginning of a colouring book and colour it in order and work your way through. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. So this one I started colouring in order. And this was the next one that I went on to. And you can see, um, I think originally I just coloured the girl, the dragon, and these butterflies with the felt pens and the gel pens. The rest, that was done after my other half bought me a tin of Xenicolor pencils. 
and I was super happy. I started to use those in my colouring books instead of just pens and gel pens. I was a lot happier to be using pencils. Um, this background here, that's all pencil. My blending there could be a little bit better, but at the time I was quite proud of that sky, I think, and the way I made this water look sort of semi-realistic. I was quite happy with that. The grass, not so much. I could probably do a better job of that now, but... But yeah, there she is. I would like to do another version of that one maybe in the actual colouring book because I have another version of this picture in the actual colouring book. And I think it might be fun just to try that again. Maybe keep the same colour scheme, I don't know. But most of these in here I have ended up um, thinking that maybe I should rework or do again. So that is a little bit of a project I've got in the back of my mind at the minute just to go back into these pictures. And this is the next one and I really enjoyed colouring this one. I remember sitting at the kitchen table and colouring this one and being so into it, really engrossed, really loving it. And the colour scheme, I really love the colour scheme. Purple is my favourite colour so I really enjoyed doing that. I was really happy with the way I made these fish's fins. Look, I think it's supposed to be kind of iridescent, sort of. I'm not sure I quite got iridescent but... Um, yeah, that, those fishes fins I was really quite happy with, doing the pink and blue in there. And I like the way that I've got these clouds in the background there. I do love the colour scheme and the blue hair. Again, with the blue hair, I do love blue hair. I think you can just about still see my little white gel pen highlights I've got going on in her clothes. Not as many as I usually do. Maybe I'm starting to go a bit overboard now, but, but this was the beginning of my journey. And yeah, they, they were kind of few and far between there. But yeah, I do love this one. It's got a little soft spot in my heart, this one. Um, even just thinking about the experience of actually colouring it, because it, it was such a fun one to colour that one. And it was so I was so happy to actually do a full picture with the pencils. Um, but yeah, I could probably do a better job of it now. I may do that one again as well. <laughs> yeah, like I said, all of these in here, pretty much the early ones, I would like to do again and try and make a better job of them. But but that one is, yeah, one of my favourite jasmine pictures I ever coloured. I think that one, just from thinking back and thinking how much I enjoyed colouring it. This is the next one, Pipistrello, this one. Again with the Zena colour pencils and the white gel pen. And uh, this one I actually did use a little bit of glitter glue. Not stickles or Dovecraft glue, just normal glitter glue on her mask. I don't know if I can get that. Yeah, there we go, that's shining there. Yeah, on her mask, a bit of glitter glue. And uh, I went for quite a limited palette on this one, apparently. <laughs> I've got a bit of a halloween -y vibe going on with the purple and the green, which works quite well. Um, and I was a bit adventurous giving her a bit of a green skin tone there as well. So yeah, she's quite a fun one. Not so many of the white highlights on that one, I noticed. But yeah, that one is Pipistrello. And next we have this one. <laughs> And this is a really fun one as well. And this one I would like to work into next month, maybe for a Halloween-y kind of, maybe colour along, I'm not quite sure yet. But this one, as I thought I had to colour the colouring book in order, I was really not looking forward to colouring this one because I'm not much of a Disney girl at all. I really don't colour much Disney at all, to be honest with you, so I really wasn't looking forward to colouring this one. But I decided to give it my own little spin on it, and uh, I've turned Snow White into a zombie. <laughs> And uh, um, Alice there is a punk rocker, supposed to be there, because you can actually see Aria there. So I thought I'd uh, capitalise on that and give her a bit of chain going from her nose to her ear. I was quite pleased with that. You don't usually see ears in Jasmine's girls. Um, but yeah, this one was super fun, um, giving giving um, Snow White the old tattered clothes, the zombie kind of effect going on with them <laughs> dirty socks and dirty fingers yeah that was really fun and Alice I did my Tim Burton kind of Cheshire cat which is the way I usually end up going if I colour the Cheshire cat so <laughs> rips in her leggings and yeah I was really pleased with that one when it was actually done I was really proud of myself for making it kind of transition from kind of a spooky nighttime scene on this side over to a bright daylight on this side so yeah I was really happy with that and I would love to go back in and actually rework that one um, with a couple of years more experience kind of under my belt a few more techniques able to make a few more better effects maybe I don't know but I just think yeah that might be a good project to do this October maybe for Halloween having them dressed up maybe I don't know 
but yeah, there, there's that one. The next one is this one, and this is based on the Avatar movies, obviously. And I tried to make this octopus look as if he was kind of bioluminescent. With lits he had lots of little dots kind of on his skin here, and I tried to make them look as if they're glowing. I'm not sure I quite pulled it off, but again, this is one that I'd love to try and revisit because I really think I could do a much better job with it now. I did make an effort, I tried, you can see I tried with the, the lights kind of glowing onto her hair there. I really think I should make it darker to kind of showcase that this octopus is glowing so I can have this area of the picture darker maybe and this light with all the glows. But all in all it was a really fun idea. The ideas are there. <laughs> I've always, always been one for coming up with all these fanciful ideas. It's the execution that lets me down sometimes. But yeah. Um, still 2019 that one and Xenicolor pencils with a little bit of silver gel pen I think and white gel pen of course um, there we go that's a jeweled octopus next we have this one this is Durga and the Tiger it's the last one I actually coloured in order I think yep last one I coloured in order and I remember being proud of the skin on this one because I just got an Derwent Colour Soft skin tone set and that's what I used to make her skin and I was really pleased with that and I still quite like this kind of sunset sort of effect in the background there going from yellow down to the purple in the bottom corner I do like how that's worked and this this is another one I added glitter she has got glitter on her dress I'm not sure if it's a sari but she's got glitter on her dress there the only thing I think really let me down on this one was the fur on the tiger. I could do a lot better job of that now. But looking back, you always see things that you can improve and work on, don't you? So, yeah, still, there we go. That is my Durga and the tiger. And then there's one more in here that I've done a lot more recently. And we can really see... There we go. We can see how I've improved with my colouring there. This one is absinthe butterflies, and I think they were supposed to be green, but I like to try and colour my butterflies as monarchs whenever I get the chance. I colour a butterfly as monarch, so this is what I did here. And I kept with a kind of very warm colour scheme for the girl, and I'm not entirely sure what was in the background, but I think I've blacked that out with... I think that might be gouache paint because this seems to be before I had my markers because there's no marker base there. This seems to be before I had my markers and she has very pale skin. I'm not sure if that's Arteza pencils or the colour soft again. I can't quite remember. But this is my Castle Arts gold combination so her dress at least is Castle Arts. I'm not sure for the butterflies. They could even be WH Smiths I think. Yeah, just, just pencil for the girl, her wings, the butterflies, the background is mostly gouache paint, I think, where I'm trying to give my a sort of grungy look going on with little fairy sparkles around her wings. And I really do love how that one's turned out. Yeah, I do like the limited palette on that one. The kind of warm palette with the green. I thought it worked quite well, so yeah. And that's the last one that I've coloured in the Strangeling special. Next we're moving on to the Alice special. And this one isn't a dedicated Jasmine special. She's done some pictures in the beginnings. And they are pictures from the Alice in Wonderland coloring book, which I also have. But this book came out before the colouring book, I think. So I managed to get hold of this one first. So I've coloured quite a few in here. This is the first one. I remember doing this one with WH Smith pencils. And I think this one was for a challenge on the Coloring Heaven Facebook group. Um, I can't remember whether it was to use pastel colours or whether it was actually a limited palette with like pink and red and green and blue. I, I don't know, I can't remember. But either way, it was a limited palette because the, the cat is pink and red and if I did use my own colours, he would probably be blue and grey, like the Tim Burton cat. I usually end up using that colour scheme for the Cheshire cat. Um, and yeah, this one, I think I'm still a little bit wary about uh, making my colours too bright and vivid. A little bit scared there, but yeah, there we go. That's the first one that I did. Um, the next one, I think I have a whip. Yep, we have this one here. That's a work in progress. Um, a slight work in progress. I seem to have been going for some sort of a rainbow 
theme in the background there but to be honest I really have no idea what my original plan was for that picture I can't remember at all I can probably figure something out if I do go back and actually finish it but yeah I have made a start on that one the next completed one is this one and this one I'd actually gotten my markers by this point because I remember Alice has yeah Alice has a bit of a marker base going on there um, with pencils, probably Castle Arts and Arteza shaded onto the top. There is some metallic sharpie, I think there's a gold and a copper metallic sharpie. This is a little bit of washi tape for the back of that kind of melted watch there. This one is based on Salvador Dali, so we have the melted watches. And the background is done with a sketch set that I did get out to show you guys. <laughs> there we go. And that sketch set. And uh, this is charcoal I think it has a stick of charcoal there this one is more a chalk pastel I think there was a paper stump in that bit that I've been using this is called sanguine oil and that's a kind of really nice sepia tone that I used a lot in the background I used mainly the pastel and that sanguine oil with maybe some brown colored pencils on top and um, this is white charcoal there was black charcoal in there a hard and a soft charcoal pencil also with my art supplies I'm using and this is carbon which is straight black this is a stick of pure graphite which I actually didn't use because that's grey rather than black but yeah, that, those are the colours that I used for the background there and I tried to make it look like an old sepia photograph I drew in these kind of foldy lines with white gel pen and shaded it to look like it's an old photograph that's getting all cracked and torn and ripped and I was really pleased with how that effect came out actually. Yeah, first time trying it and yeah, I was really quite pleased with that. And the colour scheme seems to work quite well as well with her Alice herself being in colour and the background in the sepia. So yeah, there's that one. And do I have one more? I think I have one more. Yeah, there we go. There's this one. And this is one that I actually coloured with Crayola pencils, I remember that. I bought a set of 12 Crayola pencils and I was trying them out on this Coloring Heaven paper. And it, it, they worked, yeah, but you can see that the paper did wrinkle quite a lot because I was having to press really quite hard to get the colour to build up how I wanted it to. The end result is fine, yeah, quite like the end result. This white gel pen around the edges of the clouds and for her tears there. And yeah, my Alice isn't blonde because uh, the limitations of a 12 set of pencils, it wouldn't have worked out to do blonde or I couldn't work it out. Uh, some people may be able to, I don't know. But yeah, I, I was pleased with this colour of the waves, yellowy green, blue kind of colour of the sea, I was pleased with that. And this is washi tape along the edges for that one I thought might be fitting. Okay, that's the last one that I've coloured in the Alice special. Next one we have is the Wingling Special. This is a dedicated Jasmine issue. It's more recent than the other two, so I've only done a couple in this one. The first one that I've done... There we go, the first one that I've done is that one. It's quite a dark one, that one. <laughs> she has a marker background, we can see there. I've left some paper in because that orange marker was yellowing onto this page so I've left some left some paper behind to try and try and stop that making it any worse. There was some in front but obviously I'm showing the picture so I've had to take that out. Uh, yep, marker base, pencil shading on top again with the monarch butterflies. I can't remember what was in the background. I think the background was sort of a, a graveyard scene with gravestones and stuff like that which I didn't really want to colour at the time so I just blocked it all out with a purple marker, used the purple for the sky, did little um, sparkles, stars, whatever you'd like to call them there with white gel pen, which has actually turned purple now, but that's what white gel pen does, it's kind of expected, so I'm not too disappointed. Uh, again with a limited palette, this time purple and orange, also a bit of a Halloween-y theme, but she is painted like Day of the Dead, so kind of fitting maybe. I've also stuck some little crystals there. Some crystals onto her nose, let me see those. Yeah. To just to go with the candy skull sort of face painting she's got going on there. And I really do like that one. 
yeah I do love purple <laughs> um, oh gold there's some gold gel pen on her dress I forgot to mention that just to go around these flowers give a little sparkle there so there we go and the second one is this one here and this one I decided to do after seeing a video on the Coring Heaven YouTube channel where a couple of members of staff from Coring Heaven they decided to colour this picture in a limited palette, I think five colours they were allowed to use um, kind of tropical colours and they had to colour the picture in two hours and originally I wanted to colour that picture in two hours and try and copy the challenge but no I failed, I completely failed miserably at that, it went out the window pretty soon because I'm pretty slow at colouring, I think I probably got a skin, maybe a hair done in two hours, I don't know, but I carried on and finished it because I did like the way it was going. I added the kind of face paint with white gel pen, make it look maybe a little bit tribal I thought. Her wings are glitter gel pen I think that was, and she did have to mark a base. You can see that those were the colours we were allowed to use, these two kind of shades, an orange and a brown and pink, blue and green. And originally I was going to do a sort of bokeh effect behind these leaves and flowers here, but it ended up looking really kind of busy and not what I wanted at all, so I just blacked out the outside with the black acrylic, a couple of coats of acrylic. And I think that does work quite well, it really kind of makes them pop, I think. So there we go, that is the wingling special from Colouring Heaven. Now we're moving on to Jasmine's colouring books here. This is the first one. This is actually the first one she brought out, the Fantasy Art Adventure. And the first one that I've coloured in here is this one, the first page. And this is where I discovered that my Zena colour pencils really didn't work on this paper very well at all. That's why a lot of the page is kind of pale. I was fighting really hard to get the pencils to work, but they just wouldn't. So in the end I gave up and I went in with watercolour, I think, for the background. Watercolour and gouache. I've used a lot of white gel pen to make it really sparkly. I've tried to colour the sea, echoing the kind of galaxy colours I've got in the background, which is meant to look like space, because she's the Earth in space. And I drew in the next two planets, Mars and Jupiter. Um, I tried to give a kind of galaxy effect. We have got some glitter. Yeah, there we go, some glitter on that background as well. The stars, a little bit of sparkle in the sky. And uh, the sea monsters are mainly, I think, silver gel pen and black fine liner, if I remember right. And this is, this clouds around the earth is probably also white gouache paint. I do think her hair came out quite pretty. And I do like this space background, that planet. I, I love Jupiter, I think that's worked quite well. But yeah, that's the first one that I did. We have a whip in here, work in progress. Oh, there's that clockwork draggling that I'd really like to do again at some point. This is the work in progress that I have. Um, at one point I decided that I'd really like to colour her as if she was painted on a piece of papyrus, papyrus, however you say it, um, and use some white paint to really make this robe or dress really stark white to stand out from there and try and paint her with the same kind of colours from ancient Egyptian art. That was the idea, so I masked it all out and um, painted the whole page with some instant coffee, just put on with the sponge and then left it to dry and forgot about it. So I'm going to have to get back into that at some point. Yeah, so that one's still kind of in progress. Next one. I use the tags. Oh, here we go. We have this one that I coloured. I remember having terrible trouble with that skin. Yeah, um, I did try and do it with pencil at first, I think, and it really wasn't working for me. So I just went over with a with a marker and just covered all the pencil up and shaded on top of the marker. And I think the other girl herself, she is marker based, and the stones and the background there all marker based. Worked back into with oh, looks like I might have painted on top. Feels like I might have painted on top with a gouache paint. This background, night sky, that's gouache paint. There's silver gel pen for her arm kind of coverings. And the buckles on her boots. And I've stuck on some rhinestones there. Done on the little gothy boots and on the necklace. I think that one was for a Instagram prompt as well. I think that was for one of Nerma colouring's prompts. 
back in the day, what day did it? Uh, 2020, so I couldn't really tell you what it was. I think it was something to do with her hair, colourful hair or, or something like that. I think that prompt was. The next one is this one. And this one I coloured the skin using a tutorial from YouTube by Lisa Michokin, where she uses a lavender kind of purple as a base for her dark skin tones. And I thought it looked really cool, so I thought I'd give it a try. But I made up my own little colours for it because she was using Black Widows, and at the time I didn't really have any Black Widows, so I made my own colour, little colour palette up from Castle Arts, and I think I got that to work quite well. Um, the rest is just pencil, I think, on this one. Castle Arts here for a sleeve, so probably most of it is Castle Arts, I would imagine. Um, I'm, I like how the black hair has come along there. The background, this wallpaper is paper collage, where I've cut out this, this space here. I'm not sure what was actually there, but I've cut out all the space and stuck some paper, stuck some collage paper behind it there, you can see. So, there we go. I do love how the cat looks really fluffy on that one. <laughs> okay, and next is the next page, as you just saw there. And this one was for a contest on another Facebook group where we were to colour in a fairy tale picture. And at the time I didn't really have many, well I didn't have many colouring books at all really, so I didn't have many colouring books with fairy tale kind of themes to them. This was one of the few fairy tale pictures I could actually find in my collection. This is Red Riding Hood. So I went with that, and I think I used watercolour as a base for this one, just my WH Smith's watercolours, and then worked on top with pencils, possibly Arteza or Castle Arts, not quite sure. No marker base, the background is <laughs> very faint and wishy-washy, but I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing. The wolf is white, so I try and make my wolves white whenever I can because I have a character that is a white werewolf. I always try and make wolves into a white wolf to represent my werewolf character. And yeah, I remember being pleased with that one as well, especially these grapes and the bread. I was pleased with those. I think I, I got those turning out quite nicely, actually, considering. <laughs> there we go. That's Red Riding Hood. Next. We have one little one on this page. I remember doing this one around Christmas time. Castle Arts pencils, I think that one is. Yep, Castle Arts pencils. There is some glitter glue, Dovecraft glitter glue, the crystal kind of clear one. Silver gel pen and white gel pen. There's a tiny little bit of marker base, if I remember right. Yeah, maybe see a tiny little bit of marker base there, just for the horns and the, the claws on this baby dragon. And the rest just cast lots of pencils. Can we make him sparkle? Yeah, there we go. He's a very sparkly dragon. The rest cast lots of pencils, white gel pen, that one. And I will get round to doing these other three at some point, but <laughs> not quite yet. The next one. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. This is one that I did quite recently, March this one, when I was doing my crystal theme. And for this one I actually looked up Jasmine's original artwork for inspiration with the colour scheme and I don't do that very often I don't do that very often at all I, I did change it a tiny little bit I think her background is more on the grey side and mine is more green um, was there any markers? yeah there's a little bit of marker background for her skin and for the trees the rest of it I think I tried to use super tips as watercolour and then worked on top with a little bit of pencil white gel pen to outline her wings to give her like these angel wings with the kind of fiery tips and there is gold sharpie, yep yeah, gold sharpie for the detailing on her dress and there we go I do like the wings on that one okay and the last page is a page with four little four little pictures on it, this one here this one I did first I think, she has a watercolour base let's show you up she has a watercolour base and the rest is a tiny little bit of pencil shading I think. I tried to give her a sort of scaly snake skin texture going on with her skin, not quite sure how well it worked at the time. And the background is a cheap copper metallic acrylic paint which really wasn't that great. There's about maybe three or four layers there I think and it still was showing the paper through it so I went over the top of it with this is black gouache maybe and this little bit of a red that I've kind of dabbed over the top as well 
but yeah it worked okay in the end but at the time I was really disappointed in that paint I think and next we have is this a sick rose? yeah sick rose again watercolour um, I tried to make it look like dark around the outside going into lighter colours so she looks as if she's sort of glowing I think maybe there we have this one which is actually my YouTube avatar at the moment this one this is my white werewolf character again she has blue hair which is where my blue hair kind of um, staple comes from um, there's a lot of watercolour gouache paint here for the background I drew in this kind of city skyline there in the background I did that in a lot of white gel pen for the wolf and the last one this little rose fairy here and I think this one is WH Smith pencils if I remember right with some gold acrylic in the background uh, I think that's only maybe one or two layers looks like it could do with another one but the effect the effect is there the idea is there <laughs> there we go and that's the last one I've colored in the fantasy art adventure next we have the Alice in Wonderland coloring book and not so many in this one because this is more of a recent kind of acquisition. I think I have three in this one that I've coloured in. The first one is this one. Here we go, Alice and the Sidey Toves. And this one is done with WH Smith pencils and some gold, either gold gouache or gold acrylic. It looks like gouache actually, gold gouache paint there. And yeah, I went a little bit crazy with my colours for Alice there. But yeah, I'm happy with how she's turned out. I wanted to do something that was a little bit different. And of course, these, these creatures, these slyly toves, they're fantasy creatures, so it doesn't really matter what colour they are. I did them pink and purple. But yeah, all in all, I think it worked quite well. I think the skin tone worked quite well, actually. And uh, little blushy cheeks that we've got going on. Really cute. So yeah, I think I splashed some, looks like I splashed some gouache there as well for some speckling in the background. And I have white gel pen and gold gel pen for dots in her hair. Can you see those? I've also coloured this one. Which is pretty much all gouache and watercolour paint. I think there's a little bit of pencil shading in places. Some white gel pen. And this one was a little bit of a labour of love because I'm not really one for colouring whole pages full of flowers and here we are with a page full of flowers. So yeah, it did take me quite a long time because uh, I'm not really big on colouring flowers but I'm really happy with how she turned out there. It does work really well. And you can see there the main problem with using gouache paint in colouring books, it does rub off on the facing page quite a lot. I really need to put some tracing paper in between there actually. But by now there's not much point. <laughs> it's closing the door after the horse is bolted, right? I think that's the same. But yeah, I, I really should put them in between if I use gouache paint because it does rub off. Watercolour's not so bad, but gouache really does rub off. And the last one I've coloured in here is this one. And this is my little gothic Alice and the Dust Bunnies. And for this one, I actually wrote down what I used. I used a hoo-hoo markers, which will be for a base. Yeah, we can see there. I used white gel pen, gouache paint, a teaser and castle art pencils. Yeah, I used the paint for these bunnies for splashing and making them look really dusty. And they're having that little cloud of dust going on in the corner there. I don't know why that little idea just popped into my head that these should be dust bunnies. So I've made them all grey and dusty and kind of dabbed some paint on with a sponge there. I've used a black fine liner as well. I remember that. I was trying to make her dress look velvet. I'm not quite sure if I've got the... There we go. With the kind of stippling effect, little dots with black fine liner, trying to make that dress look like velvet. Not entirely sure it's worked, but I love her pink hair and the way that stands out from the background, and especially with this turquoise, the, the black and turquoise Cheshire Cat in Burton version. Yeah, that's what I do love to do. And again, I've cut out the background. I'm not entirely sure what was in the background there, but I've cut it out and just stuck in some, some collage paper there in the background, scrapbooking paper. There we go. 
Dance, Alice and Dust Bunnies <laughs> from the Alice in Wonderland colouring book. Next we have the Mermaids colouring book. And just two in here I think. This is the first one here. And this one was done for a challenge, again on a Facebook group I think, to colour a picture with more than one person in it, or maybe more than two. I can't remember, but more than one person definitely. And I picked this one, and yeah, they're mermaids, but mermaids are people too, right? <laughs> um, and I used this one to try and work out some skin colour combinations, because this is when I just got my Arteza pencils. So I worked out some skin combinations I could colour with those, which I wrote down and haven't used since. But yeah, I really should use them because I think they worked out quite well, especially with the, the hair colours as well, matching their tails. I think that works quite well. The background is watercolour, just a cerulean blue, I think, watercolour, my WH Smith watercolours. Um, just allow, allowing it to make the, the kind of blobby, watery effects that I do love so much. And I drew in these bubbles just with a circle stencil and a white gel pen to finish off the background and this is washi tape for the frame and there's a lot of glitter on this one if I can get it to get it to glitter in the lamp <laughs> yeah the tails are very very glittery but it never wants to show up yeah that would be Dovecraft glitter glue and the last one I have coloured in here is this one Shipwreck Siren and this one was entirely with Castle Arts pencils I think this one and I remember I did change one of these waves for some reason. I have no idea why, but I do remember that I changed it. And uh, yeah, only Castle Arts pencils with white gel pen and some, again, glitter glue on the waves. Can we get it to sparkle? Yeah, there we go. Glitter glue on the waves. And I remember being super proud of that sky. It took me ages. It was really hard to do. This kind of sunset or sunrise with the yellow blending up into the blue with peachy pink clouds and I still love that. I really need to try and do that again at some point. <laughs> and there we go. Those are the ones I've coloured in the Mermaid's colouring book. Last but not least we have the Halloween colouring book and only the one coloured in here because I've only just bought this a few months ago fairly recently. And I have coloured last month I coloured this one. And this one is done Pretty much all I think as with super tips using them as watercolour by colouring on the page and then adding the water to kind of dissolve the ink. Um, there is some metallic watercolour on, on these blue butterflies and I have done blue butterflies, it's very unusual for me so <laughs> making out people doesn't happen very often. Mostly I do my orange uh, monarchs but the description did say this was monarch butterflies and blue morpho butterflies and I look them up and that is what they look like. Well, pretty much. <laughs> there we go. There's um, metallic silver for the tree as well. Her wings are metallic orange paint as well with some stickles, copper stickles, which I still think is slightly the wrong colour, but yeah, I'm going to go with it, I think. It's down there now. <laughs> Um, her boots are the metallic watercolour. Her dress is a metallic sharpie, just with the white outlining. The rest is the super tips used as watercolour. And again, blue hair. <laughs> I do love my blue hair. Yep, there we go. And that is the last one I've got to show you today that I've coloured by Jasmine Becky Griffith. So yeah, like I've said, my first three top artists, I think, will each have their own little video because I've looked at all the pictures I've coloured by them and I think, yeah, yeah, there is enough for a video each. After that, we'll be playing it by ear, deciding how many artists will be in each video, but I'm looking forward to making this series for you. Until then everybody, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!